He didn't know I was going to do this. I have a, a listener at some point I'm going to get to Ohio and meet him in person because uh, he works for one of my favorite companies. I'll, it'll remain nameless right now because I don't want to out Alex. Um, but he just emailed me right at the start of the show. And his email, uh, let, let me just read you this. I'm only emailing you because I know you keep an informal poll on these things. My principles dictate I will not vote for Trump or Biden this fall, but the latter's withdrawal of support for Israel was one of my tripwires. If he doesn't reverse course on this, or he does, but only after Israel's war on Hamas is blunted, I'll compromise my principles and vote for Trump. These are times when principles, in this case anyway, must give way to reality. That's listener Alex. John Goldberg put this up 15 hours ago. For what it's worth, I've heard from lots of reliably anti-Trump people, I mean really, really anti-Trump people, who have had it with Biden tonight. Anecdotal to be sure, but very telling in my circle. What did Joe Biden do? Well, he admitted on CNN that his administration is withholding arms for Israel despite signing into law an arms and aid package for Israel. We've, we've held up the, the weapons. We've, we've held up the one shipment that, as an old shipment. Design. We've held that up. We held that up. He admits it. You want to know how badly this is going for Democrats? Scott Jennings on CNN got David Axelrod very flustered by pointing out the obvious. Yeah. Republicans yeah. in Congress are going to be livid about this issue because right they here. they think they have a good issue. Well, Scott, no. I get it. I think they, they think that, no. they, you know, he's I, the president of the United States. He, he, They're just politicians. Axelrod's defensive. Take of a situation. Well, no, I, I, think they, I think they support our ally, and, and maybe he doesn't. They, they're going to recall a time when we impeached the president of the United States for withholding military aid authorized by Congress from Ukraine, $400 million. That was the basis of the impeachment. <clears throat> this is congressionally authorized military aid to our ally, and he is withholding it for political reasons. Basis, so, so wait one second. The ba- I'm sorry, it's your okay, show. Go, go. The basis of that impeachment was that the president of the United States called uh, uh, the president of Ukraine and he said, I need, I want you to do me a favor and open an investigation on the person who I think may be my opponent in the next election. That was the basis and of And he the wants Israel to stand down on Rafa because his base is mad at him. What's, I mean, it's a political reason. Scott, so, the analogy just doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, David, it works pretty damn well. The former president of the United States was impeached by Democrats in Congress for trying to game an election through withholding aid to Ukraine. The present president of the United States is trying to game an election by withholding congressionally approved aid to a foreign ally that is at war. You Democrats can quibble and nuance all you want, but you actually know it's the same situation. A president trying to shape a domestic political election by withholding congressionally approved aid from an ally in need. It's the same scenario. You can add all your caveats. You can add all your nuances to try to say they're not, but you know it's true, and you know it's true by how defensive you are by the comparison. You can't laugh this one off. You got to get angry about it because you know it's true, and you can't have the American people focus on it. That's how bad this is going. The president of the United States himself acknowledging the situation. This is Lloyd Austin under hot grilling by Congress. We are currently reviewing some near-term uh, security assistance shipments uh, in the context of unfolding events uh, uh, in Rafa. Uh, so you agree with the pause, and I mean, you were consulted and agree with the pause, Mr. Secretary? Uh, I, again, I, I think uh, we haven't made any decisions. We, uh, we did uh, pause as we uh, re-evaluated uh, uh, some of the security assistance that we're providing. So we, we've been very clear, Senator, as you know, from the very beginning that, uh, that Israel shouldn't launch a, a major attack in Rafah without accounting for uh, and protecting the civilians that are in that battle space. Uh, and, and, again, as we have uh, assessed the situation, 
Uh, we paused one shipment of high, high uh, uh, payload uh, munitions. Um, and, uh, and again, I, I think we've also been very clear about uh, the steps that we'd like to see uh, uh, Israel take to, to account for and take care of those civilians before uh, major combat uh, takes place. Now, there's actually an irony here that has gone unreported. Allow me to be the first to tell you how this decision, and I want to be clear here, for those of you who are progressives, you're getting more residents of Gaza murdered by Israel, if you want to call them murdered. More are going to die Joe Biden's decision to withhold munitions from Israel is going to kill a lot more people. You know why? Because the weapons Israel is not getting from the United States are precision-guided weapons. Therefore, Israel is not going to withhold its invasion of Rafah. They're going to use their general ammunition instead of the precision-guided munitions. The general ammunition can't be guided. Therefore, it's more destructive and will kill more civilians. So Joe Biden's genius decision to shape political considerations in this country by withholding precision-guided munitions from Israel is going to get more people in Gaza killed because Israel is not going to stop. They're just going to use their stockpile of regular munitions instead of the precision-guided kind. A whole lot more people are going to get killed now thanks to you guys on the left who decided to cajole Joe Biden into doing this. You care so much about Gaza, you're going to get more of them killed. Well done. And in this process, Joe Biden is undermining his claims to be the adult in the room and the leader in the room who puts serious considerations of international security ahead of domestic politics. He's doing this because he needs the anti-Semites of the left to vote for him. That's what this is about. And that's what got Donald Trump impeached by the Democrats because he wanted to shape domestic political politics and get dirt on Joe Biden from Ukraine. So he withheld aid from Ukraine, telling them, I'll give you the aid if you start the investigation on Joe Biden. It was all about domestic election consequences. Joe Biden's doing the exact same thing to Israel. Therefore, he should be impeached. The Republicans have screwed up the impeachment of Joe Biden so far. They've gotten confused. They've gotten distracted. They have failed to handle it appropriately. They now have a real issue. Joe Biden, in his own words, refusing to fund the aid. And it's not just any aid package. It's one Congress itself approved. When Congress approves, so there's a law, it was passed during the Nixon administration. I think it's a bad law, actually. I think the law should be repealed. I don't think the president should be allowed, or I think the president should be allowed the discretion to withhold spending. But Congress actually passed a law in the 1970s because Richard Nixon would do that. Congress would appropriate money for things, and Nixon would say, it's not needed, I'm not going to spend it. So Congress passed a law overriding a Nixon veto saying that the president of the United States does not have any discretion. When Congress appropriates money, the executive branch has to spend the money. Joe Biden is violating that law by not appropriating and spending the money Congress appropriated for Israel. This is impeachable. It's also condemnable. 60 some odd percent of Americans support Israel. Of Americans who want a ceasefire, they want a ceasefire after the hostages have come home. I want to give you the number. You need to remember the number. 132. When you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, I want you to remember the number 132. That's the number of Israeli and American citizens total held by Hamas today. 132 American and Israeli citizens being held by Hamas. Joe Biden said he would not rest until they come home. They're not home, but not only has Joe Biden decided to rest, He's decided to betray Israel. Joe Biden has turned his back on our ally because the anti-Semites in Dearborn, Michigan voted uncommitted in the February Democratic primary. That's what all of this is about. He's given the hecklers a veto. And once you give the hecklers a veto, they become emboldened to demand more. 
And what we're seeing from the left, what we're seeing from the Biden administration, what we see from the Democratic Party is they constantly give in to the hecklers and their veto. They constantly give the hecklers what they want. For those of you worried about the return of Donald Trump, stuff like this is going to get Donald Trump reelected. You don't want Donald Trump? Joe Biden seems to want Donald Trump to get reelected. The fact that Joe Biden has decided that he's got to give in to the anti-Semites of the left in order to win his reelection is going to be one of the things that costs him his election. Didn't go well for Lloyd Yates. Lindsey Graham had a pretty heated exchange with him as well on things that should or should not be done. What's, Andrew, what's Israel interested in? Do you believe Iran really wants to kill all the Jews if they could? They the Iranian should. regime? Yeah. They, they, do you believe Hamas is serious when they say we'll keep doing it over and over again? Do you, do you agree that they will if they can? I, I do. Hamas, okay. Though, right. Do you believe that Hezbollah is a terrorist organization also bent on the destruction of the Jewish state? Hezbollah is a terrorist, terrorist organization. Okay, so Israel's been hit in the last few weeks by Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas, dedicated to their destruction. And you're telling me you're going to tell them how to fight the war and what they can and can't use when everybody around them wants to kill all the Jews? And you're telling me that if we withhold weapons in this fight, the existential fight for the life of the Jewish state, it won't send the wrong signal? Do you still think it was a good idea, General Austin, to get out of Afghanistan? I support the president's decision. Yeah, I think you do. I think it was a disastrous decision. Good for Lindsey Graham there. You know what a lot of this is about? It's the Democratic Party and the left hates Bibi Netanyahu. They don't like Israel's prime minister, and they're trying to undermine Israel's prime minister. And, and Ron Brownstein on CNN, he's, he's had a series of tweets. And, and I, I know and like Ron, I just I think he's wrong. Uh, Ron really doesn't like Bibi Netanyahu. And he's talking about these decisions are premised on Netanyahu burning goodwill with Americans and he needs to leave. I don't think American Democrats and political commentators on television understand the situation in Israel, really, because in Israel, the left and the right are united on the elimination of Hamas, and they're willing to hold their nose and allow Bibi to wage war in Israel against Hamas across Gaza in order to eliminate. They'll deal with Bibi later. That the American Democrats hate Bibi Netanyahu so much that they're willing to do this, all it does is strengthen Israel's resolve and recognition that they are alone in the world and they must take action themselves. And so again, the bitter irony here is that more people in Gaza are going to die because of what the Democrats have just done. Because Israelis, left, right, and center, agree Hamas must be eliminated. Their last stronghold is Rafa, so Rafa must be eliminated. So what Israel is going to do without precision-guided weapons from the United States is use their general munitions that are not guided, and they will level Rafa to kill the people who killed the Jews, and they will be justified in doing so. And when all of you on the left get really upset about the death toll, you remember you're the ones who wanted Joe Biden to do what he did, and so you are the ones who provoked Israel to go further and use general ammunition instead of worrying about precision-guided weapons. They were willing to limit the death toll. You just told them, we're not going to let you do that. So more people in Gaza are going to die because of what Joe Biden has done. He should be impeached. When the world seems crazy, he'll keep you safe.